thing about taking life slower is um, you see things from a completely new perspective. Unless the wind is blowing you under the shore, it's a nice anchorage. So it's sheltered, it's easy to get to, it's easy to find once you know where to look for the yellow rock. Because why would you want to be sideways? Yeah. I've no desire to test my deck hull joint and see whether it leaks or not by dipping it in the water. have got a choice of motoring through the day or exploring but seeing as we don't like motoring uh, in Salty Lass we're going to explore Lawn Lock and um, it's a lock of quite big contrast really because uh, at one side of it it's very industrial because you've got um, the ferry port and you've also got um, the power station so it's very industrial whereas the other side is very rural uh, but I think Bev and I are keen on the rural really so we're gonna go and explore yeah I mean I can see the ferry port over your shoulder there behind you there's um, <laughs> one of the ferries European Highlanders currently in port and yeah on the other shoulder there's a couple of little dinghies being so sealed up there from mm. the East Antrim Boat Club but down at the other end of the lock it, it, it's calling me. I know, that's what I mean. It's, oh, just, we like to explore places that we've not been before and we've not been that way. So let's go get Salty Sausage down and explore. But Bev and I had had a bit of a, a tacky sail yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, was one of our, uh, what was one of our friends said? We tacked the hell out of our sails. <laughs> we certainly did. But um, I was really glad because we only had the motor on for about an hour for the entire sail. So uh, I'm classing that as... Yeah, in three quarters of an hour that was coming past the ferry port. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but I'm really classing that as excellent news, you know, when we haven't, when we've tacked. But we did tack it a bit. Um, but like I say, it would be motoring today and... Nah. If we're going to get a motor out, let's get... Salty. Dinghy motor out. Dinghy motor out. At least it's a little bit smaller. Arthur's is looking gorgeous. Still got the bike in <laughs> The good thing about taking life slower is um, you see things from a completely new perspective. Um, as Bev and I came down the lock, we saw a ruin, which I think somebody is actually going to take on board because they've got the caravan there. It's too big of a project for me, that's for certain. And we're just here at a little ruin um, with a lovely little bay and things. And it just looks idyllic, to be honest. Just idyllic, but the um, Prudence and Ellie snuck on board and they're down here. Can't take them anyway. Well, they come along anyway when they want to. So what have you found, Beverly? Fuchsias. 
They're very, very common over here in Ireland as a hedgerow plant. And um, when I was a kid, I used to take them and just nip them off about there. And you can suck the nectar out of them. You don't get much, but it's lovely and sweet. But this I've never seen before. Clearly some sort of white or maybe pale pink. Pale pink, because you can see it's some colour in here. But um, I've never seen them like this before. I've always seen these ones. The fuchsia that gives the colour its name. Fuchsia. But there you go. The other thing that's here in the hedgerow is blackberries. There are thousands of blackberries and if we'd any wit or we'd known those blackberries we'd have brought a bowl and then cooked a blackberry and um, apple rhubarb crumble sort of thing. Um, but we didn't so. And we're not taking them back because everything just gets covered in blackberry juice and it's a disaster so I'm trying to clean it up. But yeah. Different coloured fuchsias. Never seen them before. I always like these ones simply because of the, the beautiful colours. But there you go. Are you teaching Prudence how to read charts? <laughs> Nobody can teach Prudence to read. <laughs> Never mind charts. <laughs> yeah. Well, yesterday we were out exploring our lock and the dinghy and we've got some wind today so we can leave. And as you can see, I'm togged up and we've got the life jackets handy because we'll be going shortly. But before we leave the anchorage, we decided we would just discuss one or two little bits and bobs. And those little bits and bobs are finding the anchorage because it's not actually that easy. Now I've got the big chart out and I've got the pilotage out and the thing about it is when we first came here we couldn't find the anchorage because it said moor up near the yellow stone and so we came in and we looked around for a piece of the coastline that had yellow stone like sandstone you know yellow in colour we couldn't find it and there was no stones in sight that were yellow so we gave up and took a mirroring ball. Thank you, East Hampton Boats Club. You were wonderful. This time when we came back, we were determined to find it. Um, and we did find the anchorage and we have since found the Yellowstone, which is not yellow. It's actually orange. And the reason it's orange is because one side of it is covered in lichen and the lichen happens to be orange at this time of year. Maybe at some other time of year, it's yellow. We don't know. The problem we had is the side that we saw the first time, it was green because it was covered in algae. Not well, it's not only it's not only that, Bev. Um, lichen um, is a plant and therefore is different colours at different times of the year. Yeah, I know, I've just said that. I know, but it's just... <laughs> anyway, putting that to one side, we have found the stone. Um, this area here that you can see on the chart, which has got cliffs and... Well, not cliffs, but certainly high, high stone embankments marked out where it says they are yellow stone. Look very close to his little two after it. That little two means Yellowstone brackets two metres high. And we didn't appreciate that. So the anchorage is marked here. And you can see the pipeline here. And you can see the boyage, the little yellow boys and the diamond. And from space on Google Earth and things, you can easily see the pipeline, as you can see in this particular shot here. But when we looked at the, um, in the pilotage, this anchorage isn't even mentioned. The anchorages are down here in the bottom half and you've got to cross the pipeline. But the danger of crossing the pipeline, according to the pilotage, is it sits two to three metres above the seabed. So you can only really go over it at high tide because the seabed's only five metres deep and I've got a two metre keel. Three plus two equals five. It's getting a bit dodgy. So that's one thing. The other anchorages that are mentioned are shown on this chart. And it is a long, thin channel down, which used to be dredged, but isn't dredged anymore. And you can see it on, on this one here better. It's just down here. But on the Admiralty charts, it's this long, thin area here. And it's only a few metres wide. And we didn't really fancy it. Crossing the pipeline, except at high tide. Trying to find this and mirroring down there. 
it just seemed a bit awkward. It's also the fact that on either side um, of that um, very thin channel, it goes to 0.8 metres and things it, like a, that. It, it, the depth is under a metre, either it, side of it. And which it, means that um, for our boat, we're going to be running aground on that. I didn't fancy it. No, you know, you've got to be... You've got to know that you're on the line. And like you say, with it not being dredged, mm. you can't even rely on the data, can you? No, you can't. So we tucked up in behind the power station and before the pipeline. And the nice thing about it is even if your anchor drags, it will drag you out into the channel and then it shallows up onto the other mud bank. But your anchor will bite back in again before you hit the other mud bank. So you get two bites of the cherry. So it's unless the wind is blowing you under the shore, it's a nice anchorage. So it's sheltered. It's easy to get to. It's easy to find once you know where to look for the yellow rock. And um, we hope that when you've seen this video, you know where to anchor and you know what you're looking for. And that's principally why we're doing this. But wind is freshening. Um, the sun is very much come and go. I think it's going to go in behind the clouds. We're going to wind up with a bit of a grey day. But Celeve, it's sailing up here and <laughs> it's not quite the frozen north, but it feels like it some days. Um, so it's off to Glenarm and it's time to get the boat moving. So if you'll excuse me, and you look after the charts, we're going to get the stuff and we're going to get moving. So put that camera down and let's go. I have to say the tug looks tiny in comparison to the P&O. Yeah. Look at that girl. Main sheet in one hand. I'm playing with the accelerator. <laughs> vroom, vroom. Ah, oh, dears. It's a tweaky day today on Salty Lass. It's a tweaky day. We've got ten, we've got like eight, ten knots, gusting maybe 13, 15. And going down to six. <laughs> going down to six. So we've got the seals set to give us about three knots. It's six knots of wind. Uh, but when you get 15 knots, we're a wee bit overpressed and you have to use the main out, so that's what I'm doing. having your Mohana moment, Beverly. I've seen the Disney movie, you pull this thing here, it's accelerated, boom, off you go. Yeah, no, no, we're, uh, we're doing very well. We get in gusts and when the gusts were hitting seven knots. Um, if it goes much higher than seven knots, if it goes like 7.5, well, the boat's past its theoretical hull speed, so I'm just easing the main out a little bit to um, bring the boat back to vertical, um, because why would you want to be sideways? Yeah, I've no desire to test my deck hull joint and see whether it leaks or not by dipping it in the water. No, I know we don't. I'm quite content just to um, haul on the main sheet. Yeah, and um, at the rate we're going, we'll be in Glen Arm in no time. This is we're cracking along here. I think we're probably doing about five and a half, six knots at the minute. So we're close home and having a wheel all the time. That's what we like to hear. And yeah. then doing her Moana. Go on then. I don't know any of the songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 